In this first unit, uh, we'll be talking about uh, the primitives of music. Uh, what I mean by primitives is that, like, the most kind of uh, foundational concepts uh, that we we need uh, in order to define uh, music. And uh, uh, it's going to be kind of a very short uh, uh, introduction to music theory, in a way, for those of you who are not familiar with mm, Western music notation, for instance. And I hope this will cover uh, enough material that you'll be able to enjoy uh, the rest of the discussion on this topic. As I said uh, in the introduction, uh, we'll be uh, working within the uh, framework of uh, Western, uh, the Western musical tradition, uh, and in particular uh, in the uh, Western musical notation system. You probably have seen this uh, many times. This is an example of musical notation. And uh, um, music is a temporal object, a temporal system, in the sense that uh, we perceive music uh, uh, as a succession, succession of sounds in time. And so our notation, in a way, has to reflect uh, this uh, time series aspect of music uh, and at the same time represent also the way in which uh, uh, pitches, so individual sounds that we hear, are organized uh, in uh, a uh, frequency scale. Basically, sounds that are lower will be written on a lower uh, framework. I mean, in the, in the low part of this uh, representation system, high uh, 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 sounds will be written as elements in the uh, higher part of uh, the, um, this particular system. So this why you see here, these two arrows, uh, time is horizontal and pitch is vertical. Musical notation uh, has developed over the centuries. We, we don't have uh, um, represent the music representation or notation, uh, say, from uh, the um, Greeks or the Romans uh, uh, that we can interpret uh, as music, although music was very much an integral part uh, of uh, those cultures. Uh, the first example of musical notation uh, re uh, date back to the um, Middle Ages, uh, um, at least in Europe. Um, and they start to develop this idea that uh, um, we want to represent pitches and time using uh, um, a, a system of lines that we call the staff. The lines uh, uh, help us uh, uh, pinpoint uh, the height of a sound, as I was saying earlier. So if you write a note head, like you see here in this uh, figure, on a high uh, uh, staff line, this is a higher note than the one that you write on the lower staff line, that's the lower note. The temporal evolution of music is indicated uh, uh, using what we call the time signature, that tells us how many notes we have per unit of duration, so that's a way that we um, basically deal with uh, um, rhythm and, uh, and uh, progressions of rhythms. Uh, we will not be really working a lot uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, rhythmic uh, figurations, but these are clearly fundamental for our enjoyment and understanding of music. The last element in this, uh, uh, in this figure is what we call a clef that is basically a way of uh, situating uh, uh, sound uh, in the spectrum of our physical hearing. We can hear sounds uh, from basic, uh, basic frequencies around uh, 50, 100 hertz, uh, up to 20,000. If you're very young, uh, uh, with age, uh, our perception of sound uh, and hearing system kind of degrades a little bit, but it's a wide range uh, of uh, uh, sound uh, heights, and so we did a way of notating that, and we use clefs uh, as uh, uh, the, the trick. One way of visualizing the range of sound uh, that uh, we hear uh, in, in music is to uh, look at a keyboard of a piano, for instance. A keyboard of a piano has 88 keys. This corresponds to 88 different pitches from the left to the right. Is from the low notes to the high notes, 
And you can see here in this picture how uh, the representation of the notes on the staff changes if you go from the left to the right of the keyboard and how the use of keys, as I uh, mentioned uh, before, help us uh, kind of uh, normalize this range uh, into uh, a, a narrower variation within uh, the staff. In the time evolution of a, a musical piece, uh, um, notes uh, have uh, different durations uh, and the duration of the notes are indicated by um, uh, uh, different symbols uh, or different ways to uh, write the notes. Uh, and so here we are looking at uh, uh, an example where we go to slow notes to fast notes and you see that uh, the difference here is between notes that have a empty or note head to a full uh, fill note head uh, to notes that are connected by lines so they can be single, double, triple, quadruple and this corresponds to going from a slower uh, or a note that lasts longer to a note that lasts very much shorter, so from slow to fast uh, tempo. One fundamental characteristic uh, of the Western uh, tradition, uh, musical tradition, is how we divide uh, um, this uh, key, keyboard, uh, into uh, individual units that we call octaves. And here we need to uh, kind of digress a little bit into the uh, concept of uh, frequency that is associated with a particular pitch. Our hearing uh, is such that uh, we perceive the, as um, similar or e almost equal uh, frequency that are multiple of each other. Uh, and we call this uh, uh, multiple of each other the harmonics, uh, um, and in particular the first multiple of uh, uh, a frequency is what we call the octave. So in the, this context, uh, uh, the first primitive, or the, maybe the, one of the most important primitives that I want to introduce here is the idea of a note. Uh, a note is thus a symbol that represents a musical sound. Now this musical sound, uh, uh, is we, it, we call it a pitch, and the pitch is itself a combination of two uh, things. One is a frequency, or a fundamental frequency, that establishes the height of the sound, and a note name. So frequency, in a way, is a physical representation of a sound, that uses hertz as a unit of measure, while pitch is the corresponding musical object that corresponds to a note name, and typically it corresponds also to a uh, more complex sound than a base, uh, basic frequency itself. We talk about timbre of uh, a sound, for instance. From the physical point of view, though, frequency establishes uh, uh, a, a kind of a fundamental um, constraint on uh, how we perceive uh, a particular pitch. And in particular, the, um, the interval between pitches corresponds to a difference in, dif in frequencies. So interval is the difference in height between two pitches. There is a fundamental ratio here that uh, uh, kind of determines or establishes a strong constraint for the, the kind of sounds that we can use when we, when we do music. And this is the ratio of frequency that goes uh, 2 to 1. If we take a, a sound of a given frequency and we duplicate that frequency, so we go, for instance, from 440 to 880 hertz, we perceive those sounds as having the same characteristics. And this is called the octave. We can listen to this. You can hear that the frequency uh, is doubled, but the characteristic of the sound, uh, for us, perceptually, uh, is actually uh, very similar. We can hear the two sounds together, and they sound uh, uh, like uh, a, a unique uh, object. This particular interval, so this difference between frequency, is what we call in music an octave. And an octave uh, is, given our perceptual 
how we perceive uh, this this octave uh, is a uh, again a universal of, of music. Different cultures divide octaves in different ways. For instance, uh, what we call scales are ways of dividing octaves, and uh, depending on the culture, we can divide the octave uh, using uh, twelve different pitches. 19 different pitches, 23 different pitches, and they all kind of lead us from one fundamental frequency to the, uh, its, its double. The way in which we divide an octave is called a temperament. And even in the Western music tradition, temperaments have not been unique. So uh, there are uh, ways that we divided the octave according to particular frequencies uh, that differs over the centuries, over the you know, years. Uh, um, and it's only recently, or relatively recently, that uh, uh, we established a sort of standard of, uh, uh, of uh, temperament, uh, that is what uh, we call the equal temperament, uh, where we divide the octave equally in 12 parts. This was done uh, 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 as part of a cultural evolution of music, in a way, because uh, um, it was uh, it, it, it what allows, for instance, uh, different instruments with different uh, uh, timbres uh, and different tunings uh, to play together and sound uh, in agreement. This was not possible with other uh, ways of uh, dividing the octave uh, in different temperaments, and so it's also one of the main. Um, changes uh, uh, between uh, musical styles uh, in the um, in genre uh, in the evolution of music uh, in the past uh, 2000 years. So the division of the octave in uh, 12 pitches is shown here in this figure. Uh, names of the notes uh, change depending on the, um, you know, the, the musical tradition or the country, even uh, uh, different countries use different standards. Uh, but they all adhere to this uh, uh, the, the division of the octave uh, in, uh, in 12 units. And let's hear this uh, starting from uh, um, the first note, uh, or the central note of the keyboard that is C or Do or the number zero, depending on how we represent uh, the notes. For the purpose of this course, uh, um, we will adopt uh, a representation of uh, notes uh, based on numbers. So we'll number the notes uh, from 0 to 11, starting from central C in the keyboard uh, to B. So this is the range uh, of a single octave. In, and we call this integer notation. This uh, uh, allows us to uh, represent uh, the um, pitches of this um, single scale as a mathematical object. And we will be using this uh, uh, in many of the applications uh, that we'll uh, discuss uh, uh, in this course uh, and makes uh, the uh, manipulation of musical object something that we can do computationally. So we will be using uh, uh, Python uh, to manipulate uh, uh, pitches uh, and to analyze composition by translating uh, the uh, pitch information into a numerical information. One characteristic uh, of our 12-tone uh, 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 equal temperament system is that if we focus on a single octave, uh, the system wraps around 12. So it's a modulo 12 uh, uh, integer uh, um, system, and we can consider this uh, as an abstract uh, representation of any octave. So for us, uh, playing uh, on a high octave or a low octave uh, still corresponds to use pitches between 0 and 11. So, for instance, uh, <laughs> 0, 4, 7. This is still 0, 4, and 7. Earlier I showed you um, 
how we indicate the duration of a note on a score, on a, on a staff. And here I'm uh, uh, kind of summarizing uh, this duration in a table. Um, and of course, uh, uh, the duration is not an absolute uh, value. It depends on the overall tempo at which we change uh, the beat in, uh, in the song. Um, but depending on the fixed beat, uh, the uh, relation between different durations is a fixed uh, 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 ratio. So I have notes that correspond to one duration, half, uh, quarter, eight, uh, sixteenths, uh, and so on. This corresponds eventually when there is uh, a beat that is uh, uh, well defined to a, an actual time duration in seconds. And this is what uh, um, gives us uh, the time evolution of this uh, uh, musical series. So now that we have uh, a convention for indicating uh, and naming notes uh, uh, as integer numbers, uh, I just want to uh, give an, a little bit of inf information about uh, uh, other two um, characteristics of uh, uh, the music notation, so how we notate uh, the duration of a note, because each note has a duration in, uh, in the timeline of, uh, of a piece of music. And uh, duration is a relative uh, uh, quantity because it depends on what we call uh, the tempo of uh, the song, for instance. And the tempo is measured in what we call beat per minute, so how many beats we have uh, per minute. And of course, beat per minute can be fast beat per minute or slow beat per minute. So you can have more beats or less beats in one minute. And uh, that is also is what determines the uh, duration of a note. So you see here in the slide uh, that we have a simple formula for calculating how many seconds uh, or how many fractions of seconds a note will last uh, um, using uh, uh, the information about uh, the um, the bit uh, per minute uh, number and uh, the, the note value of uh, the note. The note value is uh, uh, standardized as in the table here on the uh, right of the slide. Um, and there are symbols that correspond to different uh, note durations in terms of beats. So you can see here, we can go from four beat, I mean, uh, notes that last for four beats, eight beats, uh, or fractions of a, of a beat like with quarter, one eight, one sixteen, and so on. The other uh, uh, quantity or the other uh, uh, kind of characteristic we need to discuss uh, uh, before we conclude this unit uh, is the fact that notes uh, correspond to sounds, uh, but in music we also have uh, um, the same duration of a note where nothing happens, when we have silence, and these are called rests. So rest is an absence of sound that lasts for the same duration of a particular note. So uh, you see here on the, uh, on the right uh, a chart where each note symbol is associated with the, the corresponding rest symbol, and the duration of these rests, like the duration of the notes, depend on how many beats or many fractions of beats the uh, uh, rest um, is indicated for and what is the tempo of the song. And so um, there is a correspondence between silence and sound.